Hi folks, Dr. Chapman here. Let's explore Glacier Bay National Park and learn about glaciers and the processes that make these some of the most dynamic geologic systems on Earth. Glacier Bay National Park is located in southeast Alaska and is one of the few parks not accessible by car. Most visitors to the park arrive by cruise ship. The park contains over a thousand individual glaciers, including several major tidewater glaciers, which are the type of glacier that flows down from the mountains in a narrow valley or fjord and terminates in the sea, where chunks break off and calve to form icebergs. The terminus of tidewater glaciers may be grounded to the seafloor, but is often free-floating, where glacier movement, tides, and wave action all contribute to calving. Many of the tidewater glaciers on the west side of the park are fed by the Brady Ice Field, which is a large expanse of glacier ice that flows out in multiple directions, like a miniature version of the Greenland Ice Sheet. The difference between an ice field and an ice sheet is that mountain peaks poke out from ice fields, whereas ice completely encases the underlying topography in ice sheets. Peaks that are completely surrounded by ice, like an island, are called nunataks. The Brady Ice Field and many other glaciers emanate from the St. Elias Mountains and the Fairweather Range that contain Mount Fairweather, which is over 15,000 feet high and marks the border between the U.S. and Canada. Canada, eh? The high elevations and extreme vertical relief is caused by uplift related to transpression on the Fairweather Fault. Transpression is a combination of strike-slip or translational movement and compressional movement on a fault. The Fairweather Fault occupies a narrow valley near the Pacific coastline, and this is an active fault. The last really large earthquake in the area was the magnitude 7.8 Latuya Bay earthquake in 1958. This particular earthquake is famous because it caused a huge rock slide to fall into Latuya Bay, which generated a mega tsunami, up to 1,700 feet high, that wiped out everything along the edge of the bay. This is the biggest tsunami ever recorded in modern times. The world's biggest. The reason there are so many glaciers in Glacier Bay National Park is because the high mountains capture moisture coming from the Gulf of Alaska. At around 60 degrees north latitude, there is an atmospheric subpolar low pressure zone called the Aleutian Low that causes wind to move in a counterclockwise direction. For more information on atmospheric pressure zones and wind movement, check out the video on Great Sand Dunes National Park. The Aleutian Low Pressure System sets up huge gyres or cyclones in the Gulf of Alaska that lash the coast. As the moisture-laden winds get pushed up and over the coastal mountains, enormous amounts of precipitation, mostly snow, are dumped due to the orographic effect. To learn more about the orographic effect, check out the video on Olympic National Park. As snow accumulates and the weight and pressure of the snow increases, Snowflakes and ice crystals metamorphose and start to recrystallize, where the air spaces start to get filled in with crystalline ice. This causes the ice to increase in density and change color from white snow to deep blue glacier ice color that, that looks like glass. Any residual air is trapped as tiny bubbles in glacial ice. As glaciers change thickness and move, there are stresses within the ice that can pressurize the air bubbles, like seltzer water. Ain't no laws when you're drinking claws. Glacier ice has been used for centuries to liven up cocktails and create effervescent fizzy drinks. In addition, the ice and air bubbles are likely thousands of years old, a very rare vintage indeed. Geoscientists actually study the fizzing, popping, and cracking sounds of glaciers to monitor the rate of melting. Here's an actual audio clip from the water in Glacier Bay. They're nice. All glaciers are divided into two parts a zone of accumulation at higher elevations where snow builds up and turns to ice, and a zone of ablation at lower elevations where the ice is melting. The boundary between these two zones is called the equilibrium line and is generally represented by a change in topographic slope and a change from a scoop-like or concave shape in the zone of accumulation to a, a rounded and convex shape in the zone of ablation. The weight of the overlying ice in the zone of accumulation causes it to flow downhill. It's somewhat weird to think of a, a solid material like ice flowing, but the ice crystals are actually deforming within the solid and moving past one another and recrystallizing, albeit very slowly. Even solid rock can flow in the deep earth when the temperature and pressure conditions are right. Glaciers flow at a range of rates, but the main tidewater glacier, valley glaciers, and Glacier Bay National Park move about three meters per day. Part of this movement is due to the glaciers sliding over their bases, whether it is rock or loose sediment. 
The glaciers in Glacier Bay National Park are considered temperate glaciers because they are always fairly close to their melting point and the liquid water can exist at the base of the ice, reducing friction and aiding sliding. <laughs> Some glaciers, like the Carroll Glacier in Glacier Bay National Park, periodically start rapidly advancing. These are called surging glaciers or galloping glaciers, <laughs> and they can move up to hundreds of feet a day. As glaciers flow, large open cracks form on the surface, called crevasses. The orientation of crevasses yield insight into the stresses within the glacier. If a glacier speeds up as it flows down a valley, extensional pull-apart stresses create crevasses perpendicular to the flow direction. If a glacier slows down, ice piles up and spreads laterally, forming crevasses parallel to the flow direction. Crevasses can also form at oblique angles to the flow direction due to the shear friction on the sides of the glacier. Some crevasses form due to changes in the underlying topography, extending when ice flows over bumps, and contracting or healing when ice flows over depressions. 400 years ago, there was no glacier bed, only a broad flat valley with a large river flowing through it, populated by indigenous Tlingit communities that settled on the banks of the river. Starting around the year 1700, glaciers began to rapidly advance, swallowing up the valley. <laughs> Geologic reconstructions indicate the ice advanced about 5 kilometers per year on average, displacing the Tlingit villages, which are recorded in oral traditions as part of the cultural history of the modern Huna Tlingit. By 1750, ice had completely overridden the valley and reached its maximum extent. This period of glacial advance occurred during the Little Ice Age, when average global temperatures dropped by as much as half a degree Celsius. Since then, the glaciers have been rapidly retreating due to global warming, which has raised the average global temperature by over one degree Celsius in the last 100 years. Glacial retreat is happening all over Earth, but Glacier Bay National Park has long been a poster child for this phenomenon. This is in part due to the promotional writings of John Muir, who traveled to Glacier Bay in the late 1800s to test his theory that Yosemite Valley was carved by glaciers. He found that the ice in Glacier Bay had not only retreated many tens of miles, but that the landscape was completely transformed, with a giant marine bay left behind where the ice had carved out and deepened the valley. In the last 200 years, the glacial retreat rates in Glacier Bay National Park are the fastest on Earth. World's biggest. In addition to retreat, the glaciers are experiencing dramatic thinning, losing up to five meters of thickness per year. Makes you the biggest loser. All of that ice loss results in glacial isostatic rebound, where Earth's crust springs back upward after the weight of the ice is removed. If you want to find out more about isostasy, check out the video on Denali National Park. GPS studies show that the Glacier Bay area is experiencing up to three centimeters per year isostatic uplift, and that the mountains have risen as much as eight meters in the last 250 years, the fastest rates on Earth. World's biggest. These rates might not seem that impressive compared to your car speedometer, <laughs> but for geoscientists, these rates are incredibly high, and it shows that Glacier Bay National Park is one of the most dynamic places on Earth, and one of the very few where geologic processes can be observed within a lifetime. Hey, thanks for watching. Check out some more videos and share them with friends and family. Take care.